Hey guys and welcome back to the channel, this is Sketchmonkey here. Today we're doing a POV drive of the 2024 Mazda CX-30. This is top of the line trim with this platinum quartz uh, finish to the paint. I do think the paint looks good. We have the black wheels, 18 inch wheels, 215 millimeter wide tires. Overall the proportions of this car, it's basically a lifted Mazda 3. I do love how these indicators on new Mazda just pulsates it's just of distinctly up uh, you know blinking this has this more organic pulsating feel to it dual exhaust down at the bottom so under the hood we do have a 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder putting out 237 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque it is a pretty quick car it does 0 to 60 in just over six seconds we're gonna of course take it out for a drive in just a minute fuel economy comes in at about 22 city 30 highway so not bad at all and it also comes with all-wheel driving you do have a six speed automatic with the possibility to shift manually with the paddles if you want to so let's jump inside and let's take this for a drive and let's see what this is all about I love what Mazda is doing these days with their designs because it feels very upscale for a reasonable price and that's what I love about Mazda and that they seem to be putting design features or styling a little bit above the 100% uh, functionality and that comes in with these side windows here they're very narrow the, this shoulder sits very high up and it makes it feel very cozy in here it's not a lot of space for me personally back there if I sit behind like I do now my driving position is 6'1 but it's also the the smallest uh, crossover that Mazda, of, Mazda offers so um, I didn't have high expectations when it comes to that up top we do have a 10.2 uh, inch infotainment screen that it's not it's not uh, touchscreen when you just ha have it in the native Mazda uh, functionality like we have right here software but if you plug in your Apple CarPlay or your Android Auto all of a sudden it becomes a touchscreen it's a very interesting solution from Mazda but it's still not very hard to use this dial to just navigate the screen that we have here I also like the integration of it it feels pretty nice to have it sit up there it doesn't stick up too much for the gauge cluster you might think that this is a fully analog cluster but the thing is it's actually digital the centerpiece the speedometer the big round circle in the middle is actually a digital screen and if you press this info button right here you're gonna see that we can get some different uh, information in the screen yeah I like to have it in just you know the regular old speedometer the classy look like this these dials on the side the tachometer and the um, temperature and the fuel gauge they are all still analog beautiful I love that Mazda don't fall victim for the trend that is to put a widescreen TV up on the dash keep it classy like this with a nice housing for the gauge cluster soft soft touch material all over here as well we have a head-up display up front and the paddles here which you're gonna use when we come out to the main road further down you do have these um, this is also something that I love by the way the integration of the climate control settings here you have a nice simple little dial for the temperature two zone dual zone uh, controls uh, climate zones and you also have the buttons for the fan speed so physical buttons for pretty much everything that you use on a day-to-day -day basis you have a heated steering wheel button down here and the heated seats in three different levels no ventilated seats but again this is the Mazda CX-30 I wouldn't expect it to have ventilated seats that would be a little bit over the top further down we do have the wireless charging pad down here and two cup holders with where you can have whatever drink you want I'm currently drinking a non-flavored bubbly another interesting feature of this car is that you do have a sport mode and I'm not entirely sure why you have a sport mode in a CX-30 I would understand if you had it for a for example a Mazda 3 but not the off-road version of the CX-30 it just doesn't make sense to me so I'm gonna I'm gonna turn that on later on just to see what it does I know what it does it keeps the revs a little bit uh, higher for longer and that's pretty much it gear selector here pop it into manual you do that by just moving it to the left side 
going to keep it in automatic for now. Steering wheel is a nice looking steering wheel as well. I do love the simplicity of this design and this codal design language that Mazda is doing right now, specifically with the exterior surfacing, very smooth looking surfaces. That sort of comes back here in the interior as well. Smooth everywhere, soft touch material, up top even on a CX-30. Great job by Mazda. These seats, very, very comfortable seats, power adjustable. You have a lot of bolstering here on the sides as well. So I think Mazda is trying to do a lot of things with the CX-30. It's trying to be sporty, it's trying to be more off-roady, and it's also trying to be more luxurious with the splashes of chrome that we have sprinkled here in the interior and also comes back in the exterior pieces in addition to the black trim, which then brings back to the sporty side of this car. So for, when it comes to the styling, it's a little bit confusing, but it's still a Mazda, and Mazda, in my opinion, does some of the best interiors these days, and that goes for the CX-30 as well. Up top, we do have a standard size sunroof here. As you can see, I'm gonna keep that open for now. All right, so let's pop it into manual here and pop it into sport as well. And let's shift down to third gear, and let's go. It definitely has a lot of pull to it. It's not a big car. You have the turbo, a lot of torque. You have 237 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque. As I said, zero to 60 in just over, um, uh, just over six seconds, but some have tested it under six seconds, which is just fantastic. The gearbox, the shifter, are decent. They're not the quickest shifters. But it's still, I think, they're still fast enough and they're still good enough that they add to the overall uh, joy of driving this CX-30. So let's go down to second gear here. And let's go for it. Oh yeah, it's, the, it's a fun car to drive. I love turbo cars, you don't really feel any turbo lag here. But I love how the power builds up more in turbo cars than it does in uh, naturally aspirated cars. It, it's, it's a great feeling to drive Mazdas these days. Down to second gear, taking this corner. Nice. And the sound is great too. It feels like a small little lifted hatchback. Sporty hatchback, this thing. Downshifts, we got some nice rev matching going on. Tighter corner, goes from a wide corner into a tighter corner, down to second again into this tunnel. Second gear, left turn, and then we're gonna step on it again. Very nice driving experience from the CX-30. Let's pop it back into automatic and let's disable the sport so we keep the revs a little lower, more comfortable. It just gets a little bit more relaxed when you don't have it in sport mode. The suspension is still rather firm even when you have it in non-sport mode. And that is something that I'm a bit surprised by because we still only have 18-inch wheels. The tires are still very thick on this but you can still feel every single imperfection in the road. And I'm not sure, I personally don't mind that because it gives me a more, a better connection with the surface on the road. But I can understand if people want this to be a little bit more softer than for example, a normal Mazda 3. Overall, it's a fantastic car, the CX-30. If you're looking for a smaller car, you want a sporty driving experience, but you don't really want the Mazda 3 because it sits too low, even though it still has all-wheel drive, the turbo for the Mazda 3, and that's the one I would personally pick. But if you want more ground clearance than that and have this almost very similar driving dynamics as the lower Mazda 3, then the CX-30 is a great choice.